Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. On mornings when the March wind blows and your teeth start to chatter, then here's what to do. Ask Mom to heat some milk good and hot and pour it over a heaping bowl full of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Top with fruit and oh boy, what a luscious warmer upper. A treat that can't be beat. That's Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Bill Chester was a young miner who lived with his wife Sadie on a claim a few miles from the town of Cascade. He had confidence that his mine, if properly developed, would prove highly valuable, but he lacked the funds to get the necessary equipment. One morning, soon after the bank opened, Bill Chester knocked at the office of Judd Stone, the banker. Come in. Well, Bill Chester. Sit down, be comfortable. Thanks, Mr. Stone. Now, uh, what brings you here so early in the morning? Uh, I'll get right to the point, Mr. Stone. I want to arrange a loan to get enough money to buy equipment to work our mine. I feel certain the mine will pay off within a short time if I can get the machinery to work it. Yeah, it would take several thousand dollars to get the necessary equipment, Bill. In fact, you probably need almost $10,000. Yes, sir, I reckon I would. That's a lot of money, Bill. I couldn't consider lending such an amount, or any amount for that matter, without collateral to cover the loan. Well, we, we have the claim along with our cabin and our other belongings. <laughs> I'm in the banking business, Bill. The money I have to lend out belongs to other people. That claim, plus the cabin and all, wouldn't bring much more than $500. I couldn't take a chance like that. But I told you the mine's valuable. I'm sure of that. And if I get the machinery to work it, I'm certain it'll pay off plenty. Bill, this bank would go broke within a week if I made loans to every prospector who came in telling me how valuable his claim would be after it was worked. No, Bill, we can't make a loan without a person having enough collateral at the time of the loan to cover the amount. But you can take my word for it, Mr. Stone. That mine we Sorry, have... Bill. We can't speculate with our depositors' money. Any loans we make have to do to be on something sure. <laughs> then you mean I can't get the loan, is that it? Yes, to put it bluntly, that's the answer, Bill. All right. If that's the way you feel about it, I'll get the loan someplace else. And when the mine does pay off big, you'll see what a mistake you made. Business is business, Bill. Sure. It's a cinch I never want to do any business with you when I do make good. Keep your money, Stone. I'll try to get it someplace else. After leaving the bank, filled with unreasoning anger, Bill walked the street until he cooled off. Then he headed for the office of Peter Hansen, a well-to-do land broker, who was known to have staked many of the prospectors in the vicinity. Uh, good morning, Bill. What's on your mind? Sit down. Good morning, Mr. Hansen. Frankly, Mr. Hansen, I need cash to work my mine. I know the mine's valuable and will pay off plenty if I can get the machinery to work it. Did you try the bank? Yes, I did. As far as I'm concerned, Judge Stone doesn't know a good thing when he sees it didn't have faith in that mine, I wouldn't want to put money into it. Yet when I offered to sign it over, his collateral, he refused. Said he won't speculate. I see. Well, gone, and if the mine was already paying off, I wouldn't need a loan. <sighs> Frankly, I don't like the way Stone does business. Uh, how much do you think it would take, Bill? Well, close to 10000 I guess. 
Well, I can see why a banker would think it was risky. Well, you think it's risky, too? I might as well... Sit down, sit down. I didn't say that exactly. <laughs> then what did you mean? I know the location of your mind, Bill. And I think you have good reason to believe it'll pay off. But it would be a speculation deal to lend money to work it. However, uh, I might make the loan on one condition. Oh, well, what's that? Sign over half your rights in the mine to me. Half the rights? But that way, if it pays off, you stand to make far more than 10000 Maybe, and if it doesn't pay off, I stand to lose the 10000 I suggest you go talk it over with your wife, Bill, before you decide. And if you both agree to those terms, let me know and I'll arrange to have papers drawn up and give you the cash. After hearing Peter Hansen's proposition, Bill Chester left town and went home to lay the facts before his wife and to ask her advice. He told Sadie about the bank's refusal. Then he said, There's only one other way I can get money to buy machinery, Sadie. And I don't want to do it. You mean get it from Peter Hansen? Yes. Oh, he'll let me have it. He told me he would. But it won't be a loan. Not a loan? I don't understand, Bill. Hanson's a speculator, honey, not a banker. He says he'll give me 10000 in cash for... for a half interest. A half interest in your mind? That's his proposition. Take it or leave it. Well, well, Bill, if the mine turns out to be as good as you think it will, it'd be worth it. Oh, there'd be enough for both of you. Yes, I suppose so. But don't like partnerships. Oh, it might work out all right, Bill. Why don't you consider it? There's no time to consider it, Sadie. If I don't take up Hanson's proposition today, he won't make a deal. Oh, I, I hate to advise you. But, but you think I should take it? Well, under the circumstances, yes. Without machinery, the mine will never pay much. All right, then. I'll go make a deal with it. I believe it's for the best, Bill. Well, at least it's the only solution. While I'm in Cascade, do you need any supplies? Oh, yes, there are several things, dear. I'll write a list of them for you. All right, have it ready. I'll go harness the dog. When Bill Chester reached town, he drew his dog team up in front of the office of Peter Hansen, the speculator. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Then Bill heard a familiar voice. Hello, Bill. Oh, Sergeant Preston and King. <laughs> what brings you to Cascade? Constable Downing had to go to Dawson to testify in a trial, so I came up to take over his duties till he gets back. Oh, that's great. Then maybe you can visit Sadie and me. I'll try to. I, uh, I have a mine I want to show you. <laughs> One of these days, it may make me rich. I hope it does, Bill. You've worked hard since you came to the Yukon. <laughs> oh, I sure have, Sergeant. After a few brief pleasantries, Sergeant Preston and King moved on down the street. Bill Chester entered Peter Hansen's office. Well, come in, Bill. Oh, Mr. Hansen. Have a chair. Thanks. Did you consider my proposition? Yes, I'll take it. Now you're talking sense. Draw up the contract. Bring it out to my place so Sadie can look it over and we'll both sign it. That's fine. Yes, sir, Bill, you won't regret this at all. I'll transfer $10,000 to your account in the bank today. Now, bring the papers out tonight or tomorrow for signing. Uh, just one thing, Mr. Hanson. Uh, what's that, Bill? Don't deposit it in the bank. Bring the cash with you. Well, <laughs> all right, but why? <laughs> I'm sore at Judge Stone and his bank. <laughs> because he wouldn't lend you money? Yes, I don't want to do business with him. I'll handle my own money. Just as you say, Bill. I'll have the cash with me when I bring the contract. All right, fine. Be seeing you. So long, Bill. Soon after Bill Chester left, Peter Hansen went to the bank and drew out the money. And in doing so, he aroused the curiosity of Judd Stone, the banker. Now, well, Peter, it's none of my business, but you better let me give you a draft instead of cash. Ten thousand in cash is a lot of money. I don't want a draft, Judd. I want cash. I'm making a deal with a fellow who insists on cash. Why don't you transfer it from your account to his? It'll be safer for both of you. This fellow don't like your way of doing business, Judd. Oh, must be Bill Chester. <laughs> so it is, huh? But you can tell Bill Chester I don't want his business. I'll get the cash for you, Peter. As Judd Stone turned toward the vault to get the cash, neither he nor Peter Hansen observed a tall man slip from the group around the hot stove and leave the bank. Outside, he joined another man, and the two hurried down the street. Come on, Muggsy, we gotta hurry. What's the layout, Red? I'll explain as we walk. We got a chance to grab 10,000 in cash in the next few minutes. 10,000? Yeah. Wow, well, let's hear about it. Peter Hansen's getting out of the bank. What? Some kind of a deal. Hansen's office is down the street a ways. You get your skeleton keys ready. 
We'll get inside and wait for him. Yeah. Yeah, I got him ready. All right, here we are. Hurry now, Mother. Just a minute. Yeah, this one should work. Now, come on. Shut the door and lock it. A few moments later, the door of the office opened and Peter Hansen came in. Get your hands up. Hey, hey, what are you doing here? Take a poke, Muggsy. Give me that. No, you don't. Hit him, Red. Red. Oh. Takes care of him. Hey, Red, I think you killed him. Ah, what of it? Grab that cash and let's get out of here. If it's murder, Red will hang. You shouldn't have hit him with that gun. Hey, Muggsy, did you see that dog sled outside as we came in? Hey, what about it? With that dog team, we can be miles away from here when Hanson's found. Well, then let's take it. Come on, Red. Don't let anybody see that bag of cash. Yeah, it's plenty heavy. Put it on the sled and cover it up good. I'll line up the dog. Right. Muggsy quickly hid the $10,000 under the heavy deer hide covering of the sled, while Red got the dogs on their feet and in line for traveling. They were just about ready to start when... Just a moment there. Huh? Oh. Oh, good morning, Monty. Just what are you going to do? Why? What's the matter, Monty? That sled and team belong to a friend of mine. Oh, we bought it from him less than an hour ago. Oh? Can you prove that? No, but can't you... And you'd better come with me. What are you going to do? Lock you up while I find Bill and check on your story. Oh, wait, officer. I said, I'd... come on, I mean it. Oh, what about our dogs? You going to leave them here? My dog will keep them quiet. King, <laughs> stay with the team, boy. <laughs> now you two start walking. Uh, just because he's... When Sergeant Preston reached the constable's office, he searched his two prisoners. He took their guns. You when he found them? the skeleton keys, he paused to examine them. What are you doing with these? I found them a couple of days ago. Huh? I'll look into that later. Come on, I'll lock you in the cell for the time being. There we are. As Sergeant Preston reached out to open the heavy steel door, Red saw and took a slender chance for freedom. With his right foot, he kicked at the Mountie's gun hand, sending the weapon spinning to the floor. Get his gun! No, you don't! Red grappled with Preston. They both rolled to the floor. Before the Mountie could regain his feet, Muggsy grabbed the gun and swung it. Hit him! Hit him, Muggsy! No! Uh, yeah. That put him to sleep. I didn't kill him, Red. Killing him on his bad business. Oh, you didn't kill him, but he's out cold. Get some rope of that gear rack in the office. What are you going to do, Red? Tie him and gag him. And lock him in this cell. Before he comes to, we'll get that dog team and clear out of town. While Red and Muggsy were with Sergeant Preston, Bill Chester completed his shopping and returned to his sled, where he found King with the dog. Hi, King. What are you doing here? <laughs> you must like my dogs. But you do, huh? <laughs> okay. Your boss says he's going to bring you out to my place. You really get to know my dogs, then. <sighs> yeah, fella, i got to be going home to Sadie. All right, you huskies. Soon after Bill's departure, a townsman rushed into the bank and shouted, Hey! Hey, boys! Come with me. Someone's murdered Peter Hansen. What's that? What'd you say? Peter Hansen's been murdered. I stopped in his office a second ago and found him on the floor. Come on, let's go. When the crowd reached Hansen's office, Judd Stone, the banker, examined the speculator. Uh, he's not dead, but he will be if we don't get him to Doc Sanders mighty quick. Who in thunder would have done it? And why? Pete Hansen never hurt nobody. Well, can't say for sure. But I have an idea. Who? Cool. Did anyone see Bill Chester in town this morning? Sure. He just left with his dog team a few minutes ago. Going like blazes. What about him? Hanson drew $10,000 from my bank to negotiate a deal with Chester. He said Chester insisted on cash. Why, that took good. If Bill Chester has that money in his possession, I say it'll be proof that he attacked Hanson. Sure. Judge, you and the rest of the boys take Pete to Doc Santos while I go and tell Amati what happened. Right. Come on. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, fellas and girls, can you tell what this Morse code message stands for? Sure, I'll bet you can guess that it stands for shot from gun. And that means Quaker puffed wheat. And Quaker puffed rice. The shot from guns breakfast cereal the whole family goes for. Man, oh man, huge guns are loaded with premium grains of wheat or rice. And then... 
These choice king-size kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Makes Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice crisp and tender as nuts in November. They're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. And most important, they're nourishing. Good for you. Both delicious kinds furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So try delicious, nutritious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So tasty, so easy to serve, topped with milk or cream and fruit. Remember, they're never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, Always look for the big red and blue Quaker package. Look for the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue. The two outlaws, Red Collins and Muggsy Dunn, were about to leave the constable's office, having bound and gagged on, Sergeant Preston and locked him in the cell, when the front door of the office opened. Hey, where's Sergeant hey, Preston? What, what do you want with him? Somebody tried to murder Pete Hanson. We just found a beat to a pulp. You don't say. Well, uh, the, the Mountie's not here right now. Where is he? I saw his dog down the street. Yeah, he, uh, he went somewhere to serve a process paper on a miner. Said he'd be it. gone for quite a while. Yeah. You don't know where he went? No, no, but uh, we'll be here when he gets back. We'll tell him what happened. Well, tell him we go to get the fellow who slugged Hanson. What's that? A fellow named Bill Chester did it. We'll go get him. Oh, yeah, well, that's a good idea. No sense in waiting for the Mountie to get back. I right, see you later, boys. <laughs> so they think somebody else did it, huh, Red? I guess that puts us in the yeah, clear. Not for long. We got to get that dog team and the money. Now, come on, Muggsy. Right. Red and Muggsy found the sled and dog team gone. But Yukon King was still there, just where Sergeant Preston had told him to stay. Look out with that dog. He's me. Yeah, I don't want any trouble with him. This leaves us in a nice kettle of fish. Sled's gone, our cash with it. We can trail it in the snow easy. Let's go after it, Red. Hey, look at those men coming this way. There's a fellow that saw us in the constable's office. Better not run, they'd get suspicious. Well, let's join him. We can go after the sled later. Red and Muggsy joined the crowd of excited men when they paused in front of the bank. Joe, you say the Mountie left town? Yeah, Judge. That's what these two fellows here said. That's right, and he won't be back for a spell. Why? I'm for going out to Bill Chester's place and getting him. What do you fellas say? Come on, come on. We'll follow the tracks of his sled. He had his dog team in front of Hanson's place. You can pick up the trail there. Will you go with us, Jen? Well, I can't. There's no one in the bank. I'll have to stay here. Then come on, men. Let's go get Bill Chester. Come on. Come on. As the crowd moved away, Judge Stone entered his bank. Muggsy turned to Red and said, Red, we're licked now. The sled we hid the money on belonged to the fellow thereafter. Yeah, we might as well forget that $10,000. Let's get out of town before somebody finds the money. Think a minute, will you? Look, no one's left in town. They're all trailing that dog sled. Let's get going while we can. Hold on a minute. What for? Muggsy, we got a chance to clean up a fortune. Huh? The men of the town are gone, all except one. Banker? Yeah. You heard him say that he was alone in his bank. Now, look, we let the crowd get well out of town. And we'll go call on the banker. Now, how about it? Sure, Red, it's worth a chance. With everyone gone, we won't be taking that chance. Why, it'll be like taking candy from a baby. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston had regained consciousness, but was helpless to do anything about it. He was lying on the floor trying to figure out some way of attracting attention when he heard the front door of the office open and someone call his name. Hello, Judge Preston. <laughs> Unable to shout an answer, the Mountie uttered a groan and beat his boot heels on the floor. Good heavens, Sergeant Preston bound in gag. Uh, there's keys on the office desk. Maybe they'll open this cell door. I'll go get him. It was Doc Sanders. A few moments later, he had opened the cell door and removed the gag and cut the bonds from Preston's wrist. He told what had happened to Peter Hanson. Uh, there you are. What brought you here, Doc? Uh, well, the men all said Bill Chester tried to kill Pete Hanson. Huh? And I think they've gone to get him. I saw nobody on the street. But they're wrong, Sergeant. Pete regained consciousness after they left. And I came to tell you who did it. What did Pete say? Uh, two fellows who called each other Red and Muggsy. One was tall, the other was medium height, but heavy. They're the men I arrested in front of Hanson's office. Yeah, you don't say. I've got to get on that trail at once. You go back and attend to Peter Hanson. My wife's looking after him. With everyone else going from town, I'm staying with you, Sergeant. All right, Doc. I'll get guns from the office, then we'll go get King. He'll trail them. Yeah, where is King? Down the street. Let's hurry. A few minutes later, King ran to meet them as they approached. 
Easy, boy. What are you so excited about? He sure is excited. He's running toward the bank. He's trying to tell me something. We better find out what it is, Doc. Let's go see. Meanwhile, inside the bank, Red Collins and Muggsy Dunn had easily overpowered Judd Stone, the banker, and were gathering up the loot they planned to take with them. Don't bother with the heavy money, Muggsy. Just take the gold certificates. You've got to travel light from now on. That's all I'm taking. But there's plenty of them. You'd wish you took the gold instead. Those certificates can be traced by their numbers. Not if no one can tell what the numbers are. I'll tell the police. Oh, no, you won't. Hey, Muggsy, you got everything? Yeah. Set the pull out, Red. What do we do with the bank? Lock them in the vault. Why not kill them? Shoot them. Look, if we lock them in the vault, folks will be a long time finding them. Well, smother to death in the vault. You can't do it. Oh, yes, we can. You see, Muggsy, when the men of town come looking for the banker, they'll search every place except the vault. Chances are no one besides this old man knows the combination. Yeah, Red, that's right. But if we shoot them and leave them here, they'll find him right off and start looking for the killers. Uh, that dog's still barking outside. I'm going to put a bullet to him when we leave. All right, Mr. Stone. Inside the vault. No, no, don't put me in there, please. Get going. You can't do it. It's murder. You'll hang. Hey, Red, look. Get your hands up. It's the Mountie. Get him, Muggsy. Two outlaws forgot their prisoner and wheeled to face the Mountie. As Muggsy whipped out his gun, the great dog king was upon him, causing the shot to go wild. Get away. Get him I'll get him. No, you don't. Ah. Got that gun. Drop it. Hey, help me, Red. Help. Help. Hit the crook, Judd. Let him have it. Hang on to his gun arm, King. Lay off, Mountie. We quit. Call off the dog. Oh. Down, King. Down, boy. Oh, my. Oh, get your hands up. Yeah, we're through. We give up. Oh, I've got the gun, Sergeant. They're harmless now. Murder and farmers. They were going to lock me in my own vault. If that meant for King, they'd have succeeded. That's true, Judd. King led us here. But how'd the dog know I was in trouble? He didn't. He knew I arrested these men earlier today. He must have seen them enter your bank and knew something was wrong. These farmers are the ones who tried to murder Pete Hansen. No, they can't be. They sure are. Yeah. Pete regained consciousness after you brought him to my place. He'll identify him. Oh, my. Oh, my sakes. What's wrong, Judge? Oh, I've made a terrible mistake. I've accused an innocent man. Bill Chester? Yes. I thought he was the one who slugged Pete. I told the others that he did it. When they went after Bill, they were in a hanging mood. Well, lock these two up, then start for Chester's cabin at once. Come on. Bill Chester arrived home and was about to unload his sled of the few supplies he had bought in town when his wife called from the door. Unload your sled later, Bill. I just made some tea for you. Hot tea, huh? Well, a cup of tea will be mighty refreshing after the run in from town. Did you make the deal with Peter Hansen? Yes, almost. Almost? Oh, no, here. Sit down. Your tea's ready. Oh, good. The young miner related his deal with Peter Hansen as he slowly drank his tea. He had just finished when there came a knock at the door. I'll answer it, honey. We came to get you, Chester. Hey, what's the occasion of this? I don't stall, Chester. You know what we want you for. Now, hold on. You know, I don't... there's something wrong. Yes, ma'am, something's wrong. Your husband tried to murder Peter Hansen today. Oh, no. That's a lie. Mind if we search you and your cabin? Well, of course not. Search all you please. Search for what? The $10,000 Bill took from Hanson after he tried to kill him. Oh, no. What are you talking about? All right, boys, I'll search Chester. You search the house and the sled. No, 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 wait a minute. What went on in They time? found nothing on Bill Chester or in his cabin. But the search of the dog sled disclosed the sack of money that had been hidden there by Red Collins and Muggsy Dunn. Here it is. It was hidden under the supplies they brought from town. Oh, there's some mistake. It can't be. All right, Chester, what do you got to say for yourself? I didn't put that sack on my sled. I don't know how it got there. That's a lie. If it wasn't for your wife, I'd string you up right now. If Pete Hansen is dead when we get back to town, why, we'll hey, string you up. Here comes the mounting. Thank goodness it's Sergeant Preston. Hey, Judge Stone and Doc Sanders are with him. Sergeant Preston knows I didn't do it. Uh, Preston, we got your man for you. Go ahead, Sergeant. Release him. He didn't commit any crime. We're sure he did. Here's the gold he took from Hanson. We found it on his sled. I can explain how the gold got there. You can? Yes, Sadie. And the men who put it there are in jail. He tried to kill me, too. Oh, shut up, Judd. Let Sergeant Preston do the talking. Yeah, let's hear what he's... Sergeant Preston quickly related what had happened to him and banker Judd Stone. And also how he had arrested Red Collins and Muggsy Dunn when he found them preparing to steal Bill's sled and dog team. I was going to lock them up and then go find you, Bill, but they got the best of me for a while. But the gold, did they put it on the sled? Yes, Sadie, they've confessed. They're being held on a charge of robbery and attempted murder. Then Pete Hansen's alive? Yes, Bill. Pete's going to be all right. Well, now, has everybody said his piece? Yes, Judd. Have you something to say? You bet I have. Bill, I owe you an apology. 
It was I who sent these men out here to get you. Oh, no hard feelings, Mr. Stone, I understand. Guess I owe you an apology myself. Nothing of the kind. Now, if you want that loan from my bank, you can have it, just for the asking. No collateral needed. Uh, thanks, Hi, Mr. Stone, but that wouldn't be right. I, I've given my word to Pete Hansen that I'd sell a half interest in my mind to him. And Bill always keeps his word, Mr. Stone. But, but there is one thing. What's that? Oh, this has taught me a lesson. The bank's the safest place in the world to keep money. I tried to tell Hansen that this morning. Will you take charge of this money? Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Well, until Pete's better, you can keep it in the bank. Then you can credit it to my account. Sure thing, Bill. Glad to have a customer as honest and upstanding as you. You know, when Bill and Mr. Hansen buy new machinery and get the mine going, they'll be doing a lot of business with you, Mr. Stone. Thanks to Sergeant Preston and King. If it hadn't been for them, I wouldn't be able to do business with you or anybody else. Well, King, old boy, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. They're yours for the asking. Yes, fellas and girls, the exciting Sergeant Preston Yukon Trail cutout models are yours for the asking when you ask for Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. There's no waiting, no box tops or coupons, no extra cost. Your grocer has them. The 59 Yukon Trail models come on eight different new packages of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. The swell taste in cereals shot from guns. With these models, it's just like hitting the Yukon Trail with Sergeant Preston and King. You get models of Sergeant Preston's own cabin in Whitehorse, his dog sled and team of huskies. You even get scenery that's along the Yukon Trail, the Klondike Mountain and Forest, the Indian Waterfall. You get buildings and interiors. A Yukon riverboat with a paddle that turns. And all kinds of Yukon animals. You'll want the complete set of eight different new Yukon trail packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The original crisp, fresh, shot from gun cereal that is never sold in bags or both. Build your complete Yukon trail right away. They're at your grocer's now. Hurry. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King... Meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Fugitive Bride. When King woke us up in the middle of the night, Bill Morgan and I discovered that his bride had disappeared from the trading post. Half an hour later, we learned that she was in great danger. There were killers in the forest, and the girl was headed straight for their hideout. By the time King and I found her, the outlaw guns were pointed straight at her heart. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats, because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.